Cold weather operations can present flight crew and ground staff with a potentially dangerous but avoidable challenge to aircraft safety. Ice. Ice on the wing or other control surfaces is dangerous because there is no known reliable piloting technique for recovering an aircraft from wing stall due to ice contamination during takeoff. The danger of contamination is avoidable by following the clean aircraft concept. In all icing conditions, the procedure is simple. Do not take off if your aircraft is visibly contaminated. If you suspect that the aircraft may be contaminated, or if you have exceeded your de-icing, anti-icing holdover time, and you are not satisfied with the result of your pre-takeoff contamination check, do not take off. As pilot in command, a member of maintenance crew, or as dispatcher, it is your responsibility to look twice for ice and follow the appropriate procedure established by your company. Clean wings are essential to perform a safe takeoff. Sometimes icing is obvious and de-icing, anti-icing is the clear course of action to take. But there are times when a visual check alone may not reveal the presence of ice contamination. From a distance or in poor lighting, wing and tail edges and upper surfaces may appear to be clean. But if icing conditions prevail, a walk around and tactile inspection at the gate is essential. Icing conditions exist when the outside air temperature is below 6 degrees centigrade and the difference between dew point and outside air temperature is less than 3 degrees centigrade and visible moisture is present. Resultant icing may appear slight, but its presence may still represent a potential threat to the safety of your passengers and crew. There is no such thing as a little ice. An aircraft wing is configured for optimal aerodynamic efficiency, as indicated by the smooth airflow contours. This efficiency is degraded by any contamination of the leading edge or upper surface, regardless of wing type, hard or slatted. Even seemingly minute particles of ice distributed over the upper surface of the wing, no greater than the density of medium sandpaper, will result in premature airflow separation and may cause a stalled wing. At takeoff, even small amounts of wing contamination can cause significant losses in maximum lift, reduction in angle of attack for maximum lift and considerable increase in drag. Ice on wing leading edges or upper surfaces in any quantity or variety can result in diminished control, wing drop or even a complete wing stall at liftoff. Clearly, there is no substitute for inspection and de-icing, anti-icing in icing conditions. In the narrower safety limits of cold weather operations, it's your professional judgment and your company's procedures that can make the difference between life and death. When ground icing conditions exist, a thorough walk around is essential. 
it provides the foundation not only for flight safety, but also the basis for coordinating pre-flight activities, boarding, gate holding, de-icing, and the provision of any other necessary services. Sometimes contamination is immediately obvious, as when it is snowing. However, snow falling on relatively warm leading edges and upper wing surfaces, as might be the case after fuel uplift during a ground stop, will melt and can leave them appearing to be clean. But the melted snow may later refreeze and form runback ice on the wings and stabilizer. Even if the snow is not melting, do not assume it will blow off the wing during ground roll. It won't. Moreover, snow settling on the wing may indicate that the anti-icing fluid protection is no longer effective. Remember, the presence even of minute formations of frost or ice anywhere on the aircraft indicates the possibility of more widely spread contamination. And frost accumulated on the leading edge can result in a dramatic increase in stall speeds, even as much as 30%. Correct equipment performance and accurate instrumentation readings, unimpaired by ice, are vital to maintaining command and control of your aircraft. When you have reviewed the situation, aircraft and weather conditions, deciding what your de-icing, anti-icing requirement is, and coordinating its timing, is of key importance. De-icing is the procedure to commence with when the aircraft is already contaminated with frost, ice or snow. Anti-icing can be performed as the precautionary treatment of a clean aircraft with anti-icing fluid to prevent ice or snow accumulating on it. In the first step, de-icing, the aircraft is sprayed with heated type 1 fluid, glycol diluted with water to remove frost, snow and ice. In the second step, anti-icing, the aircraft is sprayed with type 2 fluid. This is a thickened glycol and is applied as a water glycol mixture at a higher concentration, up to 100%. This provides protection against ice formation on the aircraft. But this protection does not last indefinitely, as the tables show. The effectiveness of de-icing, anti-icing treatment is limited to specific holdover times. That is the time during which the de-icing, anti-icing fluids provide effective protection against further icing of the aircraft's control surfaces. This time is calculated from the moment that anti-icing spraying commences. Holdover times vary. They are dependent upon prevailing weather conditions and on the glycol water mix ratio of the anti-icing spray. The tables provide the guideline. It is therefore very important, if delays are expected, that de-icing, anti-icing is performed at the latest possible moment prior to takeoff. Captain, I'm Eli Jimerson, your certified de-icer. Uh, we start de-icing now. AC-305, request to de-ice with time to... Jimerson, your certified de-icer. You've been sprayed with type 2 fluid, 100% concentration. Your holdover time began two minutes ago. Your aircraft is clean. Some airports have installed remote de-icing, anti-icing stations on the taxiway, thereby bringing anti-icing closer to the runway and closer in time to take off. Nine two one request pushback. 
cleared for pushback. Ground 921, request taxi. Ground. You're cleared to taxi to runway 15. You're number 8 in line for takeoff. Moderate delays are a feature common to flying at any time of the year. However, during winter operations, delays may have an added significance. Nevertheless, meeting the commercial schedule must be done within the clean aircraft window. And that begins to close immediately de-icing commences. Keep in mind that holdover times are a guideline, not a guarantee. Whatever the pressures, you cannot hurry when you are holding in line. But you can and must monitor and review the weather conditions. On the flight deck, a visual check of the aircraft's surface in the immediate vicinity may provide one method of inspection. But it assumes that the conditions discovered will be the same for all the aircraft's surfaces. A wing check from cabin windows with wing inspection lights on offers another or supporting check. Here, the black stripe on the wing may assist visual detection of ice on a grey upper surface. Tower, this is a 921. We have exceeded de-icing hold over time. Request a taxi to de-icing facilities. 921, roger. When clear of preceding traffic, take first left and taxi to Charlie Apron. If holdover time has been exceeded, and in your judgment the pre-takeoff contamination check is unsatisfactory, resist the pressures to proceed to takeoff. This is the captain speaking. I'm taking the precaution of returning to the gate for de-icing. This will mean a delay in departure of approximately 30 minutes. You should return to the ramp for an additional de-icing. That is a matter of safety procedure, not a decision option. Operations, this is 921. We need a second de-icing. Proceeding to the de-icing facility. Expected departure time, 1500 hours. Safety first, always. Good coordination with ground crew and ATC is essential. In adverse weather at airports with high traffic density, the difficulties of departure coordination are greatly increased. You need to be an active player on the team. Determine your requirements and communicate them. Neither ATC nor ground crew can read your mind. Having exited the taxi queue, establish the time frame within which you are likely to be reallocated a position. Ensure as far as possible that the timing of de-icing and permission to taxi are sufficiently within fluid holdover time constraints. Bear in mind that your decisions and requests can have an impact not only on your flight schedule but also those of other aircraft, on tower operational efficiency and on ground crew resources. When all preventative measures have been taken and no ice contamination is present, but icing conditions exist and you want to allow an additional margin of safety, select Maximum Takeoff Flap Setting in accordance with your aircraft type operating manual. And if neither runway length nor obstacle clearance present limitations, rotate slowly less than 3 degrees per second to a lower pitch angle to achieve a higher liftoff speed and lower angle of attack. This is a precautionary measure only, to be applied in icing conditions, but not when the aircraft is known to be contaminated. Look twice for ice. If you have exceeded your de-icing holdover time, or if you are unable to confirm that your wings and tail are ice-free, either through your own checks or external inspection by ground staff, do not take off. De-ice. Because ice is unforgiven.